Taking a look at this side of the box, we can see that it's a very plain sort of brown box. Um, nothing too sort of fancy, but it has got all the information that you need. So we've got the Cooler Master logo, Test Bench version 1.0, and it tells us through some of the main features as well. The uh, support for uh, ATX form factors, what size device is it, sort of features 5.25 inch, 3.5 inch, 2.5 inch. Uh, supports ATX PS2 and EPS PSUs and the motherboard form factor. Lots of information. Tells us what the test bench version 1.0 looks like and also what it looks like when it's actually had the application of all your components. This side of the box is nothing really too fancy. In a few different languages, it tells us that it's a chassis and that it's test bench version 1.0. On this side, though, you have got a barcode sticker with relevant serial numbers on it, but once again, nothing too important. It also does tell you what colour the actual uh, test bench is. In this case, it's black. Taking a look at this side of the box, once again, Cooler Master test bench version 1.0, but it does list the main specifications, what colour it comes available in, the dimensions, height, depth and width, the weight of it, also the material used, what motherboard form factors it actually uh, supports, the device space and the PSU type. And then lastly on the top of the box we can see that there's lots of stickers actually covering most of it but we have tried to peel them off but we didn't have much luck but it does give you another view of what the product will look like. We've already opened this because we were so excited about getting this because it's meant to be a fantastic product that we wanted to open it anyway. So it's just a matter of cutting this open and opening the box up to reveal exactly what's inside. Now inside we can see that there's quite a lot of protective material so we've got the foam packaging as well as a bag sort of covering the main product. We have got some screws, fixtures, fittings in a bag here and then we can proceed to take this out of the box. So once we've got it out of the box we can then continue to actually take it out of the protective packaging so you've got sort of four foam blocks on each corner, one on each corner and taking that off third one off and the last one off we can then take the product out of the actual protective bag. Taking a look at the top and sort of the front of the case we can see that it's got the Cooler Master logo here it tells us that it's the Cooler Master uh, lab so I'm not quite sure what this little bit there's meant to be, whether that's meant to say test or, or what, but it just looks like a bunch of dots to us. Uh, on the front we can see that it has got sort of a shiny material in here and that there are a couple of buttons here, one for the power and one for reset. Now these obviously go into a form of headers. Now these headers will just plug straight onto your motherboard uh, for the power switch and the reset switch. It also tells you once again the Cooler Master name there, so a little bit self promotion. We can see that on the top of it there are plenty of holes sort of spaced around for uh, supporting the latest form factors of motherboards. The left hand side as you can see has a couple of sort of grooves and slots. Now this is going to be uh, for when you actually go to fit uh, your components into there. These are really going to help. Um, sadly there's no sort of manual or anything that comes with this but it's not really needed because uh, it should be very self-explanatory and the type of user that's actually going to be using a, a test bench like this is going to be an enthusiast user and they're not really going to need instructions on sort of using the relevant features of it. The other side once again Cooler Master logo, Cooler Master Lab. So nothing too exciting on this side just a little bit more self-promotion. Now from this angle you can see exactly where your components would go so firstly motherboard on top and then you've got your room for your various other components including sort of DVD rewriter, power supply and so forth. And it's quite a nice design overall because obviously having the motherboard on top you can sort of route the cables throughout sort of this way and out the front if you uh, sort of so wish and also you'll be able to change your components especially things like graphics cards and memory, uh, CPU coolers very very easily with a device like this. Now taking a look at the bottom we can see once again there's a few slots and grooves and this whole area here devoted to ventilation. Now this is going to help in regards to your power supply and other components that will go into the sort of middle part of the uh, test bench. We can also see that there are four rubber feet, one in each corner, and the reason that they're rubber is to aid in sort of anti-vibration and noise properties. And once you've made sure that everything's there and you've got all your components together, your motherboard, your memory, CPU and cooler, graphics card, CD drive, hard drives, you can continue to install it and you can see this is exactly what it will look like once you've installed it. Uh, there is one thing that we sort of did find that with the SATA cables if you are going to sort of poke it through here it may put a little bit of strain on sort of the bend of it but it shouldn't be too bad. You can also see with SSDs down here that we had to just sort of mount them on one side because 
it is sort of space for five and a quarter inch and them being two and a half inch there's a massive gap in between but because SSDs are so light, it doesn't really matter if it's only screwed in from one side. And now taking a look at the other side, we can see all the power supply leads and exactly where the mess is. Um, it's a little bit awkward with a power supply. If you are gonna go for this sort of a test bench, definitely go for a modular power supply. Um, obviously we're not using any of the modular leads because of the components that we're using. We are just using the hardwired leads, but some of them were unneeded like Molex connectors. So if you are going to use this, I'd really advise looking for a full modular power supply, something that you can only uh, that you only need to plug in the cables that you need instead of having sort of all this mess here. Um, but overall, uh, you can see that everything does look quite neat, quite tidy, and it's going to be easy to change things like the heatsink, the memory, the graphics card, and even just popping the motherboard off straight away.